It's been three long years, and the fourth season of Stranger Things is finally, finally almost upon us. We got a chance to speak to the genius minds behind the series, The Duffel Brothers. Check it out. Without you, we can't win this war. You know, uh, given a junket of this size, I figured that you're going to be asked the same questions over and over again for the rest of time. So I thought I would like to use my five minutes to talk to you about being a fan because Stranger Things is one of those rare original offerings that has inspired fandom on a scale. And I'm curious as to if you, whether or not you guys remember the first thing that made you fans whether it was Spielberg, King, Carpenter. Like for me, it was yes. a, t- a yeah. toss up between Spider-Man and Star Wars. Uh, yeah. Right. You know, it was, yeah, I do remember. It was, um, it was, I saw a commercial for Tim Burton's Batman. It must have been either late 89 or 90. And so at the time we were like six. And I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. It had Danny Elfman's music, you know. So I saw that. And then Ross and I, we became obsessed with seeing this movie, but it was PG-13, so our mom was not letting us see it. Eventually, we just harassed her enough to the point where she let us see Batman. And that was the first... We became fans, not just of Batman, but of Tim Burton specifically. And that we, it, took me a, it took us a second, but we started to be able to track his style because it's so distinct across from film to film. So, you know, we would see, we saw Beetlejuice, we saw Edward Edward Scissorhands, right? So we were able to understand or start to understand what his director was. Danny Elfman's music was so distinct. We got all of his cassette tapes, right? So we listened to the Batman Return soundtrack so much. That's still one of my favorite soundtracks. So I think that that was the first thing that, um, you know, so Batman and specifically Tim Burton, that was our first fan experience. And I'm not sure we'd even be here had we not had it because it was so powerful that it made us want to make movies tell stories for a living i was gonna say i I think my mom took me to see ghostbusters when i was five or six which was far too young i didn't i didn't get the blowjob joke and like oh no 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 no. i'm like (laughs) no ghostbusters was ghostbusters works on two levels i feel you know it it works great as a kid's film but when you watch it as an adult you go wait what (laughs) You yeah. say that, but when you have a six-year-old running around the house going, let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown, <laughs> the family gets a little weird. <laughs> oh, my God. There you go. But it was the shared experience, right? Because I think there yeah. were so few things that were out. Like, I'm living in Malaysia. You guys are over in the States. Ghostbusters, yeah. Back to the Future, Indiana Jones, Nightmare on Elm Street. We kind of grew up with these same things. E-Man you know, was a big one. Yeah. E-Man, E-Man. was a huge one. Um, yeah. But what is it about? Like everything goes through these cycles in pop culture, but what is it, in your opinion, about 1980s nostalgia that seems to have a longer shelf life than hmm. anything else? Yeah. Is it just because we had better stuff? <laughs> I, I don't, I, I don't know. I have, I, I, I think Ross and I, I don't know, is the short answer. The longer answer is, I mean, I think for me, why those stories resonate with us or, and continue to resonate is it's the ordinary and the extraordinary. It's as simple as that. And like, I feel like that's what Spielberg did so well. That's, I mean, if you look at any of those films that you're talking about, that's what those films are. I mean, that's back to the future. That's, as I said, every Spielberg movie, that's, I mean, it covers so much ground. And I think the reason is, so when we watched a movie like Goonies or back to the future or whatever it was, I completely saw my, I identified so much with the main character. They were living in a world that was very similar to my world. And then they were traveling in time or um, being attacked by the little gremlins or whatever it was. And it just felt like I would, it, it felt more immersive than anything else. And then I think in the nineties, that kind of storytelling fell out of fashion a little bit. And you were often following an FBI agent or a secret right. agent. Or, I mean, if you just, I'm just I'm being super broad. And then I thought that Shyamalan, brought it back a little bit. And he was a big influence on us in high school. And I said, okay, this is the type of story I want to tell. And then we connected what, and I think Knight was also um, influenced by the same movies that we were growing up. And so then, and those movies exploded and they were original. And it's like, people were so, 
It's like the industry couldn't figure it out. Like, what, it's like, no, this is the, I think this is, they all share a certain DNA. And at least that, and Ross and I wanted more of those stories and they weren't making them. So I think, I think it has less to do with the 80s-ness of it, the, the music, the hair. It's, I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it really is the style, the, the type of storytelling that was being um, done back then that was, ma- you know, mastered by Spielberg, Stephen King, among so many other great artists at the time. So that's what we went and wanted to evoke with the show. And I think that's why it works with people who grew up on those films and then people have no idea what any of those, these films are that we're talking about. I mean, yeah. you know, the fans, if they go, they, it goes, it ranges, the range is so wide. You know, we have seven-year-olds watching the show. They don't know what Back <laughs> to the Future is. So, right. you know, they, so they don't get, they don't know any of the references, but I think it's because they see themselves in the kids. Uh, and so anyway, that's my long answer. <laughs> as to Thank you very much. Um, they're telling yeah. me to wrap. So, gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. And let me tell you this much. You've done it. You evoke those exact same feelings in me every time I watch Amazing. and rewatch your shows. So thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you, you so man. Much. That means a lot. Yeah, thank you so much. Cheers. Your suffering is almost at an end. Those were the Duffer Brothers. The fourth season of Stranger Things drops Friday, May 27th. It's still only part one, though, so we're going to have to wait for part two. But still, watch part one. Let us know what you think. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, follow, check out our other videos. Tell your friends, tell your family. You know what to do. (laughs) 